What's up guys, welcome back. In this video, we're going to be talking about the Guild T8 unit. Now we're going to be taking a close look at the differences between the regular T8 unit and the Guild T8 unit. We're going to be breaking down the cost of the regular unit versus the Guild unit. We're going to, and we're going to be taking a look at the stats between the, the regular unit and the Guild. And hopefully with this video, we can convince the developer team to take a closer look into these units and to make changes very soon. Because in my opinion, the state at which the Guild T8 unit is at right now, it is not fair. And the developer team should address these issues quickly for those players who want to pursue this unit. So let's just jump into it, guys. So before we get into the into comparing units, let's talk about how you get the guild unit first. So in my previous video, I discussed how the requirements for T8 are mostly to get your research lab to 21. That's the biggest hurdle. Once you get your research lab to 21, you unlock the ability to research any or all three of the t8 units so you can just click on the icon and look at each of their respective costs now once you've unlocked your respective t8 unit there is one more hurdle to jump over and you can find that hurdle in the guild tab under your upgrade for your guild research if you scroll to the very bottom you're going to see three researches the sorcerer the demon and the lord each representing their respective class now, because I'm in a very old server at this point, I do not recall the cost of each individual research, nor do I recall the minimum guild level that you must be in order to even research these three units here. Now, what I mean by guild level is not guild fort, but the guild level research you find at the very top. This has to be at a minimum of level 10, I want to say. I could be wrong, but it's very easy to look up. Just go into your guild research tab and you'll be able to see it there. All you have to do is get these to level 1 and you've unlocked them. And that's it. So now let's get into the comparison between the regular T8 unit and the guild T8 unit. So let's start off with the infantry unit. Let's start with combat stats. Working our way down from the top, the, the regular T8 unit is at the top and the guild unit is at the bottom. So HP, same. Attack, the guild version is weaker. Defense, the guild version is weaker. Crit bonus, the guild version is weaker. The accuracy bonus, the guild version is weaker. Dodge bonus remains the same. Now let's compare the cost of each individual unit. The regular T8 unit, the Reaper, less expensive in terms of resources alone. Resources alone. We have 560k food and parts for one Reaper, and we have 672k food and parts for a Sorcerer. Cash, 56k cash versus 67.2k cash. Now let's look at that last resource here. One Shadow Matter for Reaper. 150 reputation points per sorcerer. I'll talk about the reputation points after we've done comparing all the units, but for now, just put this on the back burner, this third cost here. Shadow matter versus the rep versus reputation points. Just a quick summary. For the infantry class, regular T8 stronger than guild T8, yet regular T8 is less expensive resource-wise. Now let's go take a look at the other classes and see if the trend is consistent. So here we have T8 Walker units. The top unit being the regular T8 unit and the bottom unit being the guild T8 unit. If you guys haven't noticed already, the units with the purple hue, that is the primary aesthetic difference between regular T8 and guild T8 is they give the guild versions a, a slightly purple hue. So looking at the combat stats from top to bottom. So let's begin with the stats. Between both units, HP remains the same. Attack, regular T8 is stronger. Defense, regular T8 is stronger. Crit bonus, 
regular T8 is stronger. Accuracy bonus remains the same. Dodge bonus, regular T8 is stronger. Now let's compare. Now let's compare the cost per unit. Regular T8 cheaper resource wise, just as we did with the infantry class. Let us put this last resource here on the back burner and we'll get we'll discuss this in just a moment. But just for the record, one champion, one regular T8 unit requires two shadow matter and one guild T8 walker requires 300 reputation points per unit. In summary, in summary, regular T8 walker stronger than guild T8 walker, yet they are cheaper to train resource wise. Now let's go take a look at now let's go take a look at the airship units and see if the trend continues. So here we have the T8 airship units. Again, the top being the regular T8 unit and the bottom being the guild T8 unit, hence the purple hue on the guild T8 unit compared to the regular T8 unit. Beginning with the stats, HP remains the same. Attack, regular T8 is stronger. Defense, regular T8 is stronger. Crit bonus, regular T8 is stronger. Accuracy bonus, regular T8 is stronger. Dodge bonus remains the same. Now let's take a look at the cost per unit. Regular T8 airship, 1.68 million food and parts per unit. And only 336k gas per unit. Guild T8 airship, 2.01 million food and parts and 403k gas per unit. Resource wise, Guild T8 are more expensive. Again, Let's put this on the back burner for now and we'll discuss this in just a moment. The regular dragon, the regular T8 airship, requires 3 shadow matter per unit. And the guild airship unit requires 450 reputation points. So the trend continues to be consistent between all unit classes. And that trend being regular T8 is stronger than guild T8, yet regular T8 are cheaper than guild T8 resource wise. Now let's look at that last resource that we've been putting on the back burner this entire time. So here's a great frame of reference just to showcase the increasing cost per unit and just to compare the stats between each class and a comparison between the two units in each respective class. Now let's discuss the shadow matter and the reputation points. Now one question we have to ask ourselves is, what is more difficult to acquire, shadow matter or reputation points? Now we all know how to get shadow matter. You can either farm level 12 or level 7 boxes, or you can gather regular resource tiles, whether it be food, parts, cash, gas, electricity, and you get plenty of shadow matter shards, which you can convert into shadow matter. If, you, if anyone farms, you know that farming resources gives you a lot of shadow matter shards. So it's obvious that shadow matter is not difficult to get. In the past, it has been very difficult to get your hands on. But the ways the game has changed to this day has allowed players to easily get their hands on shadow matter. And if you're already at T8, you should have no problem farming Shadow Matter if you've made it this far. So I think we can all agree that Shadow Matter is not difficult to get. Now let's talk about reputation points. To see how many reputation points you have, you can simply click on the guild icon and go to the members tab. Now there's a column to the far right that, that represents the amount of reputation points that each member has. There are a few different ways you can get reputation points. There may be other methods to acquire these reputation points that I don't know about. But as far as I know, 
the two main ways to get reputation points are donating resources every day and fighting for capitals. Now, if you were to donate every day the maximum amount of resources through donating resources alone, you can get 1,465 reputation points per day. Now, let's assume that the only source of reputation points for the majority of players is to donate resources because unshielding would be very risky. You can get ported on, sped hit, zeroed, looted, etc. Let's look at the reputation point cost for one unit of each class. Now let me repeat that we are assuming you can only get 1,465 points per day maximum by donating the maximum amount of resources. With that amount of income, of reputation points, you can only train 9 Sorcerer per day, you can only train 4 Demon per day, and you can only train 3 Lord per day. Now if you put together all the information that we've covered in this video up to this point, we have to ask ourselves the question, which unit is more difficult to train? Me personally, the guild T8 are much more difficult to train. Then we ask the question, if that's the case, why is guild T8 weaker? Why do they suck? Answer me that one, devs. Seven pirates, hello. And the funny thing is, is when I go over to the demon unit, and I click on this little information icon, it reads, the guild version of the champion just as handsome and powerful, but a better bang for your buck. Now with everything we've just discussed, I'd like to know how, how a guild T8 unit would be a better bang for my buck if it's more expensive, resource-wise, and reputation points are more difficult to get than Shadow Matter. I'm aware that Ark of War has been around for a long time, who knows how long, before I even started playing, but either the devs do not care about the T8 unit anymore and they just want to force you to go for T9, have no incentive to get T8, especially the T8 unit, or these units are just outdated and they need just a little, a little touch up. Which one is the case? I don't know. I'm also aware that the requirement of training troops back in the day was very different from what it is today before T9 existed, T10, T11. From what I've heard, T5 used to cost Shadow Matter. While that does not exist today, and I'm sure that discouraged a lot of players from playing this game, that T5 costs Shadow Matter, if that's true, but changes must be made to the T8 guild unit. There has to be an incentive to go for these units. If you incentivize players to go for the guild T8 unit, if you provide incentives to players to go for this, for this awesome looking T8 unit, you will see more players donating higher amounts of resources, and you will see more players fighting for capitals. So please, I am just simply asking the developers to give players to train guild T8 units. They do look cooler, but they should be stronger, especially for how much more expensive they are than regular T8. So, Seven Pirates, if you're watching this, I hope we've showcased the flaws in your guild T8 unit. Changes must be made. Provide players with incentives for these high tier units. The requirement for T8 unit is no small feat. It took me six months minimum to get all my buildings to level 21. And before I even got to level 21, I saw the research and I felt hopeful that these guild T8 units would be stronger than the regular ones. It gives players something to look forward to when they're grinding out the level 21 buildings. But we get there and we see that the guild version is actually weaker yet more expensive and more difficult to train? That doesn't make any sense to us. So please reconsider the guild T8 unit, and I hope we can see some changes done in the upcoming server updates.
Thank you all so much for watching. If you haven't done so, subscribe to the channel to get updates when my videos drop. I hope you guys can join me in contacting the devs and addressing this major flaw in the game. Thanks guys, stay awesome, and I'll see you guys next time.